All right, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make an effect similar to what you see right here using Adobe Photoshop. And this is actually extremely simple and easy to do. And there's a couple different ways of going about this. So there's this example that I have shown right here, which is essentially type that's created out of an image and then rotated around to create a more striking effect. And then there's also this version, which is extraordinarily subtle if you wanna create almost a mirage style effect in an image using type, or you can also use silhouettes or illustrations. It doesn't really matter what you do, although in this particular tutorial, we'll be using type. So the very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to find an image that will work well for this. I'll link this particular photo, which is totally free to download on Unsplash in the description of the video. And I've brought up Unsplash right here just to show you some examples of what will work well. This image of these leaves would probably work very well. Or even if you were looking for a forest, hopefully there's a top-down view from a forest, something like this one, or perhaps I can find another one that's a bit more top-down, something like this one should work really well. But totally up to you what you want to use. You can experiment with different images. Basically, if you want to try it out, this is fast and easy to do, so let's get to it. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up Photoshop, put your image inside Photoshop, and from that point, you want to make the type that's going to be used for the overlay. So this is the type that I had made. I actually used Illustrator to make this as I prefer Illustrator for doing typography. For whatever reason, it's just easier for me. But if you want to do this 100% inside Photoshop, you can also hit T on your keyboard to open up a type tool. Or in the left-hand bar, you just look for the T icon where you click that. So click the T icon or hit T on your keyboard, click on the image, and then you can type out whatever you want to type out in order to do this. So I'm gonna type out ocean as I'm extremely creative and this is a picture of an ocean, so I might as well call it exactly what it is. And then I'm just gonna enlarge this. I hit control T on my keyboard to open up transform and then you can just scale it from there. And also you'll notice that these letters are pretty well tracked out. I have the tracking set to 100. So if I highlight this, that does something interesting. And then go to my character panel in this VA with the arrow going left and right, I have that set to 100, that's the tracking. The bigger the number, for example 200, spaces it out more. And if you don't see the character window and you wanna track out your type like I have done here, just go to Window, and then from Window go to Character. So that is all you really have to do. All that matters is that you get some type in here, doesn't matter what the color is, you're just gonna use this to then create a mask from later on. Since I've already had my type in the bottom though, I'm gonna delete what I made here and bring up the type that I'm going to use to create either this effect or this effect. But before we continue onwards, I do wanna call out a sponsor to this video, which is Skillshare. So we're at the start of a brand new year and this is your chance to make 2020 at least if you're watching this in 2020 or maybe it's 2025, but no matter what the year is, you can make this year a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just kind of get lost in your creativity with Skillshare's online classes. What you can learn and do on Skillshare might just surprise and inspire you. And Skillshare is an online learning community, so if you're on my channel to learn new skills, Skillshare is an entire platform built for that. And Skillshare offers a ton of stuff to explore. You can create real projects taking the classes here and also get support from fellow creatives that are also taking classes on Skillshare with their awesome community. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth in your creative career or in your hobbies, whatever the case might be for you. And also Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy schedule. So with this being a class on Photoshop, you can go to browse and then in browse, you can see there's all sorts of awesome different sections from animation, creative writing, but also graphic design. So if you're interested in my video, you're probably interested in graphic design. And I think a particular class that's worth calling out here is the Logotype Masterclass with Jessica Heesh. So Jessica Heesh, and I do hope I'm saying her last name right, is a stunningly talented typographer. And Skillshare gives you the opportunity to learn from truly one of the most talented people in the world. Her skills far outstrip my own to really push yourself forward and learn how the very best at what they do do it. So in this case, there's an hour and a half class to learn about her process and how she goes about creating the level of work that she does. So that's something that I'm going to personally watch and I also would recommend that you watch. 
And if this is something that interests you, Skillshare is incredibly affordable, especially when you compare it to pricey in-person classes or workshops. An annual subscription at Skillshare is less than $10 a month. So that's not a lot to pay for a ton of extremely high quality content, but as an added bonus to this particular video, in the description of this video, I'm going to place a link that you can click to get two free months of premium membership to explore your creativity. So a quick thank you to Skillshare for offering the two free months of free membership to anyone that watches this video. Just check out the description, click that link, and you should be good to go. But that is it for this. Thank you again to Skillshare. And now back to the content. So now assuming that you have your type ready to go inside Photoshop or the silhouette or whatever it is you want to do this effect on, all you have to do is make sure that layer is currently selected and then hold down control on your keyboard if you're on a PC or command on your keyboard if you're on a Mac and then click the little thumbnail inside your layers palette. So once you do that, you can see it'll select the type here. And now this new part is something that I didn't even know you could do until I was playing around in Photoshop this morning or maybe I did know at some point and then forgot. But what you want to do is select the background image of the photo. It's probably called background in your layers palette unless you renamed it. And then just hit control J or command J on a Mac while this selection is still active. So I'm going to do that right now. And then as you can see, it actually created a brand new layer. So if I turn off this background image, I'll click the eyeball to make it no longer visible. You can see that it made a layer of just the selection and it copied it right from that image. So we're really in a good spot and kind of ready to go for this particular one. And this is what you want to do if you want to create an effect like this, where it's, it's a very subtle mirage style effect. But let's say you want to create one that's like this, where it's actually rotated 180 degrees. So in that case, what I'm going to do is select the background without anything else selected. The type shouldn't be selected here. And I'm going to hit Control J or Command J on a Mac to duplicate that. And from that point, so now I have two of these exact same images, basically. They're duplicated on top of each other. I'm going to select the one that I duplicated, and then I'm going to hit Control T on a PC or Command T on a Mac to bring up Transform. I'm going to hover over this center little box here, and it will show a rotate icon as you do that. I'm going to hold down Shift and then just drag this around until I rotate it a full 180 degrees, and then I'm going to hit Enter, which will confirm my selection. Alternatively, a different way of doing the exact same thing is you could go to Edit, and then from edit, you go to transform, and then you could go to rotate 180 degrees, which will bring it right back to where we started. So that is another way you can go about doing that. For whatever reason, I just find using the keyboard shortcut faster for me, but totally up to you. And now that we have this duplicated one where it's just the same image, but rotated 180 degrees, we're going to go through that step over again to once again, select the type layer to create that marquee selection. And remember, just hold down Control or Command on a Mac to do that. It doesn't even have to be visible for you to select it by clicking that thumbnail. And then once again, I'm going to select the layer, in this case, the one that we rotated around. And then I'm going to hit Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac to duplicate it. So if I remove this right here, you can see we very quickly and very easily created this reversed out image that has a pretty cool looking effect. Obviously, a lot has to do with the awesome photo that I have behind here. But nonetheless, it looks fairly impressive and it's super easy to go about doing this. So while this is almost exactly what I have right here, you can tell that this one looks a little bit different. So the next steps are really up to you in terms of how you want to customize this. Personally, I often find it fun to do some slight tweaks to the colors to help it stand out more. So first up, one thing we could do is I'm just going to select the layer that has this type on it. And then on the bottom of the panel here, there's a FX button, which if you hover over the FX button, it'll say add a layer style. I'm going to click that. And then I'm also going to do an outer glow. So in this outer glow, we can add an outer glow if that's something that you think helps make your image look a bit better. So it'll obviously depend a lot on what your background image is and if it's something that you even think stylistically makes sense. The main areas to look out for are opacity, noise, and then the box that has the color. So the color is the color of the glow itself. And this is carried over from the exact same image I created before. So I use sort of a light blue, but I could also use a more pure white if I wanted to. And then the opacity just determines how visible 
this background glow is. I don't want it to be this visible. I want it to be very minor and subdued just to help it sort of blend in. And then noise is what makes this look grainy or noisy in the background here. Whoa, way too zoomed in. So if I just go here, you can kind of see that noise a bit better. The more noise, the more noisy this looks until it looks not even realistic. But since this is a water image in the background, I thought just a little bit of noise actually makes it look a little bit more natural and diffused. And obviously I don't want the opacity at 100%. So we can just knock that down until it seems more like a almost like a soft water spray behind the letters to help them stand out more. So this is purely a stylistic or aesthetic choice. It's up to you if you want to do this. And I forgot to mention in the elements section, there is spread, which I have to make that bigger. You can tell it just spreads out the noise more. And then there's also the size, basically almost like you're running a Gaussian blur. It behaves very similar to that. The bigger the size, the more it blurs outward. So I don't want this to look super fake and almost a weird halo effect starts happening around those letters. So I'm just going to play around with this really fast here to make it look much more subtle. I'm going to bring this out more, Oop, bring it less actually. So we can see if I can get this. That's actually pretty close to where it was before. I'm fairly happy with that. And I'm just going to double check if the white looks better or if something that is a little bit more of a slight blue looks better. Actually, don't mind the white. We can just do that because it's fairly striking there. So that's a thing you can do using outer glow if you want it to stand out more. There's a little checkbox you can turn on and off to see the before and after effect. But up to you if you think that's worth doing or not. And also what I had done in the one I did above is I also just tweaked the colors a little bit to help it stand out a bit more. There's a couple different ways of going about this. So for this one, I'll just do the easy way, which is selecting the layer and then hitting Control U on a PC or Command U on a Mac which will go ahead and bring up the hue and saturation panel. And then I tend to just shift the hue ever so slightly to see if I like how the letters look with a little bit different tone than the original. I will say avoid using lightness because it starts to make it look really fake, really fast, as opposed to something that's much more subtle. So you can move the hue ever so slightly if that's something you wanna do. You can move it a lot if you want it to look totally crazy as opposed to the original but I tend to like tweaking things just a tiny bit so it stands out ever so slightly. So in this case, I made it a little bit more of a deep blue as opposed to the slightly more turquoise blue of the actual image. I'm happy with that and we can let that go there. And also, just like we duplicated everything before, if you ever wanna do some tweaks like that but you don't wanna worry about accidentally overriding your original image or changing something where you can't change it back, you can always just hit Control J or Command J to duplicate it, make the changes there, and then you'll still have your original ready to go. But let's say this isn't the style you wanted to do and you actually wanted to do the one up here, that's almost like a mirage, a very slight difference compared to the original one. So we did create that before where it's right here and actually, because it's part of the image, it's exactly the same image, you can't see it at all when I have it turned on. But I'll hit Control U while that layer is selected, just so we can see where our letters are here. So you could, just like I did before, use only the hue saturation to make this a very, very subtle tweak. So I think that's a pretty cool effect by itself if you want something very, very subtle. And I'll just hit OK, although I'll probably go back and delete what I'm doing in just a second. And then I'm actually going to drag this FX and copy it from this one that has that very slight white outer glow that has the noise to it onto this one that I just made and slightly tweaked. And you can do that by just holding down Alt or Option on a Mac, clicking and dragging that effects to your new layer, and that'll go ahead and bring it up right here. So that's a way of duplicating the effect that you did previously without having to recreate it. And as you can see on this particular style, I don't like how that looks. You could double click on the outer glow, which will bring up this menu, and then you could bring down the opacity or even change the color of the noise to a more true blue to hide that. But given the effect of this one with that kind of mirage looking look, that's not something I want to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. So I'm just going to drag the FX to the trash can, which will go ahead and delete it. But an alternative way of actually going and having a bit more control over how these colors look, I'm just going to delete this really fast so I can remake it using this type and then go through an alternative process. So now we have, once again, that type is up and open right here. But let's say you want more control or more fidelity over this than just a hue saturation, which kind of sweepingly changes the entire thing. You could alternatively select this and then go to image and then adjustments. And then you can go to color balance 
which is up at the top here, just below hue saturation. You could also go to selective color, which is just below gradient map in this sort of third section here, but that's a bit more complex. So I'm gonna stick with color balance as it will let us do exactly what we need to do right here. So the cool thing about color balance is it lets you shift the RGB channels to be more cyan, magenta, yellow, or more red, green, or blue. And then in the tone balance, you have mid-tones, you have highlights, and then you have shadows. And also make sure the preview box is checked so you can see what you're doing in real time. But we'll start with shadows. And what I tend to do is just grab a bar and start dragging it to the left and the right to see if I like the way that the effects are looking. So in this case, you might be able to see a very, very subtle shift in these letters to look a bit more cyan and you can see that even more apparently in the sand here so if you wanted an extremely subtle image in this case i actually think this looks pretty cool it's not legible in the slightest but if you had a logo or something back there it might just kind of tweak it or shift it a bit or even you could have a pattern back here that you could shift to make it look like a slightly different less natural image and almost a sci-fi cool sci-fi way. I do think this general type treatment reminds me of a sci-fi movie poster for whatever reason. But you can just start dragging these to the left and the right to see what you think looks good when it comes to tweaking the overall colors of the image. Obviously shadows is very apparent because they're the dark tones that'll really start to pop and stand out. But you can go through each one of these, drag them left and right to the extremes even to see what you do and don't like, and then just go back and forth until you get it happy. And then you can move to mid-tones, for example, and continue tweaking there, which will have even more ability and customization of how you can tweak this out. So this is a really, it's a much more powerful way of doing this than hue saturation because you have so much more fidelity in the control that you have. And then you can go to highlights, do the exact same thing here. In this case, you get some really interesting stuff happening. You have to be a bit more careful though if you want to keep looking natural as it's pretty easy to blow things out and make it look really fake really fast. So that's a really quick overview of the color balance feature in Photoshop. It's a really powerful tool for shifting colors that's more powerful for sure than hue saturation at the cost of being a bit more difficult or not quite as quick to go through. And then of course you could do all of that and then select the layer, hit control U, bring up the hue saturation panel again, and even shift it more where all the tonal shifts will happen at one time. You could bring down the saturation, bring up the saturation, up to you in terms of how you want to make this look. But I do think this is a really cool effect, surprisingly easy to do, and kind of fun just to play around with images and see how they go. So that's actually it for this video. I do hope you found it helpful. I think it's a cool effect that once you learn how to do, you can replicate very quickly. And it also teaches you a lot of neat things about manipulating images inside Photoshop. But once again, a very quick thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It's very much appreciated. Remember to click the link in the description to get two free months of Skillshare premium membership. And that's a great opportunity to continue to explore your creativity inside a tool like Photoshop. And I do hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please consider subscribing. I do my best to keep creating new content like this whenever I can. And of course, if you have further questions or comments, feel free to ask them in the comments section. If I can help you out, I'll do my best to. And if not, hopefully someone else in the comments section can. But that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.